G'day reefers, welcome to Gallery Aquatica TV. I'm Cam the Fish Guy. We're here for part three of the Great Tank Swap. And in this series, we've been uh, re replacing a large reef tank. The reason for replacing it was a small leak that was only going to get worse. And you've seen us uh, crane up the new tank, take out the old tank, and we've also done all the new rock work and the tank is almost at the point that it's complete. But today, we're going to finish off gluing some corals, we're going to get the new dosing pump set up, we're going to make a few other modifications to the tank that are going to really improve this tank and, and make it the, an absolute incredible tank. So um, we'll show you the modifications that we're doing and then we'll look at the tank and the, the finished product. So let's get into it. So having a new tank and a new aquascape, a new plumbing, that's all great, but I'm really happy to be able to revamp the dosing system. As you can see, we've got uh, some vessels here, which are just uh, some miscellaneous vessels that we've been uh, dosing out of. We've had problems with uh, the hoses curling and sucking in air. So we're going to set up the same system that we set up at, uh, the, at Gallery Aquatica uh, on the display tank, which is gonna be some beautiful vessels. We're keeping this Kamoa uh, doser. It's doing the job uh, adequately, and um, we're just gonna swap out the vessels so that we can more easily fill them up and we can, so we can ensure that the dosing vessels are always full and always dosing into the tank. So I'm gonna pull this one out and then we'll put the new vessels in place. So these vessels were so poor that we had to actually prop them up so that the tubes went right to the bottom. So I'm very glad to be getting rid of all of this. Uh, some other miscellaneous things. Spare Fosban reactor. And this is our custom made dosing rack. I'll probably still use this but uh, I'll clean this all out and put in our new dosing vessels. We have our dosing vessels sitting in place. Now I'm gonna fill them up with our supplements. With almost all of the tanks we do, we have calcium, KH, and mag. And I'm also going to pull the stickers off these and stick them on the vessels so we don't get them mixed up. maybe not quite as pretty as the dosing vessels that we set up in the display tank at the shop, but as long as you know calcium, KH and mag, that way you can never get them mixed up. So given the diameter of our Kamoa tubing, it's gonna be difficult to get the tubing down over the nipple of the vessel. And so I'm hoping that if I use some hot water, I'll be able to squeeze it over that uh, otherwise, I'll have to do the same as what I did on the shop display tank and use an adapter. But I'm going to give it a go. To me, the Kamoa tubing seems to be a little bit wider diameter than the e coil tubing that we used at the shop. So this is just some uh, boiling hot water. Couldn't find a mug, so this is the next best thing. Just give that 30 seconds. Okay, it's on. 
So it's definitely best if you can put the tubing directly onto the dosing uh, hose tail or nipple or whatever to call it so that there's the least chance of air being drawn into the lines. So thankfully I'm able to take out this dosing rack which looks like I made when I was in kindergarten and we've moved the doser up onto a shelf in here and it fits really well. The other dosing rack was going to clash with our vessels so I'm happy with the way this looks. These are all the dosing vessels are set up and I'm going to prime the lines to ensure that there's no air in any of the vessels. So I'm doing a manual dose on pump number one So this is magnesium and in the vessel I can see the solution going up the rigid tube. It's now into, there we go, into the flexible tube and it's about to come out through here. There's no air bubbles in the line, so that is perfect. Pump number two. So pump number two is calcium, which is the left vessel. All right. So that is, that line is entirely filled and primed with solution. No air bubbles again. And pump three, which is the buffer. So our KH, as I'm manually dosing, it's actually sucking air bubbles in through here. So that means at some point in the line, air is getting in. And this is exactly what you want to look to avoid. So it probably means that the seal between the nipple and the rigid tube is not quite airtight, um, but I'll have to fix this. Otherwise we won't have uh, the right amount of solution going into the tank. Action. So I've found the source of the air leak into the tubing of the buffer. And it was just that when we were putting the um, tubing on with the hot water, I must have just moved this uh, little nipple enough that it's uh, broken the seal slightly. So now, now that I've fixed that, you can see that there's no air being drawn into the line and it's dosing perfectly. I'll put this here. that's our dosing pump setup. So it's time that we do some work on some of the other areas of the tank and the next section we're going to fix up and improve is the overflow system. So water is flowing down this end section which is uh, actually a weir which runs the full width of the tank. The problem that we have is we need to ensure that fish can't jump down into this section because they're very hard to catch and we want them to stay in the tank, of course. So to cover this, I'm going to use some egg crate, which I've got here. And I'm going to create a barrier which runs the full length. And I'm going to start by measuring up the egg crate and just making some cuts so that I can work out if I place it flat or if I place it upright. I prefer to place it upright because sometimes if it's flat, the fish jump onto it and end up dying because they're out of the water. So um, I'll start by measuring it up and I'll show you how we cut some egg crate. So cutting egg crate can be a little bit of a messy job and I'd typically recommend that you go outside to do this. However, we're going to do it here in the middle of uh, the lounge room in this very nice house. So I use my Leatherman, it's got a bit of weight to it and I just use it to break through the rungs. I 
like so. I'm hoping this will be the perfect width of the tank. So it's pretty close. I'll probably cut off one too many rows, but that's all right. I'll make it work. If this was an open top tank without the cabinetry that surrounds up the top here, I would trim this down. But I'm gonna leave it like this for now because this is all entirely enclosed and a little bit extra height isn't gonna hurt. It's only gonna decrease the chance of the fish jumping in. There's also minimal, in fact, there's hardly any space just between the weir combing and the egg crate. And it's also quite solid. It's sitting in place perfectly. There's no chance that that's gonna move unless we want it to. So we're getting so close to finally completing this great tank swap. We've put all the corals and fish back in place. I've just been putting the, the last of the corals onto the rockwork, gluing them in place. And now we're gonna do a water change. I'm gonna do about, probably about a third water change. So this is our drainage hose. I'm gonna drain this into the toilet and then we'll fill it back up again. So we're doing about one third water change today. I'm gonna to take the drainage hose out. And this is our fill hose, which is feeding down to the IBC downstairs. Just using a towel here. I don't want to scratch the paintwork, of course. I've actually hit the MP40, but that's all right. I'll fix that later. And now I'll turn it on. So 13 days after the great tank swap, we finally completed the job. Now today we've done a few little things and the tank is looking sensational, but we'll show you what we've done today before we have a good look at the tank. The first thing we've done is we've created a barrier so that the fish cannot jump down into the new overflow system. Put the final cladding up. We've improved the water circulation. So we have a new wave maker, an MP40, which matches the original MP40. So we now have strong flow from this end. And most importantly, we've put the dry side and the, uh, the cord of the wave maker in the cavity which we've created with this wooden section on the end. And the last thing that we've done today, we've set up the dosing pump. This is really cool. So we now have three large vessels, they're five liters each, clearly marked calcium, KH, and mag. And we have them on our original dosing pump. And so we can very easily see that the uh, levels are, of the vessels are full. And we have these really cool LED lights that illuminate each of the vessels and just for a little bit of pizzazz. So now, what everyone's been looking forward to, let's have a look at the tank and how it's recovered after this massive event.
So thanks so much for watching. We really enjoy bringing you the content um, of all of the jobs that we do, all of the reef tanks that we work on. Uh, we have been noticing that a few people have been asking for some more content. So we've been toying with the idea of doing a second video per week. So let us know in the comments if you think this is something that we should do. So that's our video for today. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, hit the subscribe as well. We'll be putting out videos every week showing a, a new tank with new products. There's going to be lots in all the videos. I'm Cam the Fish Guy and keep on reefing.